This video will demonstrate how to connect one Ultra Pico keyer to another Ultra Pico keyer that may be located anywhere in the world just using your browser. In this instance, we're using the Chrome browser, the WebRTC of Source Connect Now. On one computer for this demonstration, I have Source Connect hooked up. And we have two CW operators here. They're connected to Source Connect now. On this Windows 10 that you see, the sound card that's being used is the Source Connect Now sound card, which is created with Synchronous Audio Router. And we're doing the same setup we have in the Windows 10 video about using this bandpass filter so that the side tone sounds fairly decent. This is what the sound tone coming from Fred, W3NJZ, he is a silent key, so I'm using his call sign in honor. He was a good friend of mine, and we did a lot of CW over the years. So here's what uh, Fred would sound like if he had an Ultra Pico gear. And again, we'll take we'll take the uh, side tone off here a little bit, and I'll turn this down so it doesn't hurt your ears. And this is what the Ultra Pico keyer side tone sounds like without that filter. And there's a little bit of audio glitching because it's using uh, WebRTC and uh, UDP packets. And I have a lot of stuff going on this computer here, so there may be some audio glitches. It won't be in a normal QSO. So that's his end. So he just connects to one of the uh, guest logins you have to set up your own account on Source Connect now. There is a free version that allows you to connect up to a, f a few other operators at the same time. You can actually, right now during this beta version, uh, request nine additional connections. So you can connect up to nine people at once over here just using your browser. It has to be a Chrome browser. That may change in the future with uh, Source Connect now. The reason I like Source Connect now for this is the uh, it's great audio codec uh, bit rates. There's a lot of options here that you can see. I'm just using uh, 128. Goes down to 8, of course, which won't sound very good. But at 128, it sounds almost like you're listening to it live without anything else, just on your own same computer. So. That's a pretty reasonable codec, and it doesn't take up a lot of bandwidth. So this is the Win Windows 10 so uh, side. And I'm on Linux over here. And this is my Source Connect now. So let's get his side tone back on the filter there we go okay so back here we're listening to Fred on my laptop and you see his VU meter here from from now we're going to change the orientation I'm going to send to him so I have another sound card that's how I have this set up from I'm in the same room with two computers I'm using two different sound cards. This from desktop and to desktop is an additional sound card so I can hear the audio that's going to and coming from. So here's what here I, I would be sending to Fred. So this is my microphone input here on system. We're going through the filter, going to the sound card so I can hear it, going to the pulse audio jack source so it will go out on source connect. Source Connect is listening to the jack source, which is right here. So I'm taking the output from here to send it both my sound card for side tone monitoring and also to transmit over to Fred. Now when Fred hears it, it should come in from the desktop here. So I'm going to have to try to set this up and see if we can get this to so you can hear what I sound like. So I'm not going to go directly from my CAF filter to the screen recorder, but we're going to see what it sounds like from Fred's perspective. Let's see if this works. So 
So hopefully that worked and I'll find out once I review the video. So that's what I would have sound like. Now let me double check this here. Yeah, okay. I could hear that so that you should be able to have heard that too. So that's my microphone, my filter on Linux, going to my sound card so I can hear it, and going to the transmitter re receive, receiving uh, input for Source Connect. So this is uh, Linux, and over here we have Windows 10. So either way, they're both using Jack Router. And this is what the Jack Router looks like. The resolution is a little bit low because I have a 720p laptop. And the uh, desktop over there is 1080. So here's the Source Connect now. That's the playback sound card. This is the Source Connect input. So the keying from Fred goes through his pedal board. This is a VST host which is using this M bandpass filter. One thing I like about pedal board too is when you save it, it comes back just like it is. It saves the settings, all the plugins, and all the values of the plugins. It also saves the audio settings since I'm using Jack Router. And I'm just using two pins for input and output. This will be in the show notes, but this is a very nice VST host. It's free, open, uh, freely uh, available for download. So that's the basic setup for that. So we're both using Jack Router, even though he, uh, Fred's on Windows and I'm on Linux. We're able to talk to each other just using the correct input source, using Jack Router for Linux and Jack Router for Windows 10. Again, this is a little bit of a learning curve for Windows since you have to use the uh, synchronous audio router as well, but the videos will be in the show notes if you want to. It's well worth the uh, learning curve it takes to get synchronous audio, audio router set up as long with Jack Router. These work as a one-two punch for audio routing, especially being able to see all the names that you, you uh, call them. And I just made a new one for this video called Source Connect Now just to show you the basic setup for this. Now we're coming in the line in jack because I have my second sound card on my laptop going to the desktop where Fred's located. And we're using this input on the desktop computer, which is the line input. And so I'm diverting my system here. Instead of going to my filter, I, I took it right over to that other sound card. The output of this sound card here on my laptop, this second sound card, which is a, a Behringer UCA222 with a line output, goes to this line input on the other sound card, which is the Realtek native sound card. And then it's going, it's going in there without any filtering so that we can demonstrate using this filter here, this M bandpass, which is a free filter that was in the first video about Windows 10. So then that goes to the Source Connect. So to emulate that if Fred was keying a keyer, I don't have two keyers here, so I had to use one and, and then switch between them. Then when I send, Fred will hear it on this playback Source Connect, and I, when, I'll hear Fred when he sends CW to this Source Connect input. So I hope that's not extremely confusing. And over here, again, uh, my microphone has the U Ultra Pico Keyer side tone input. And I want it to go to the filter first. From the filter to the system, my sound card, so I can hear it, to the pulse audio jack source, so it, Fred can hear it. So now it's going to transmit over Chrome, the Chrome browser, and this source connect now. It sounds way more complicated than it actually is. Like anything, there's a learning curve to it. This from desktop and to desktop is my U UCA Behringer 222 on my laptop here. That uh, I have the input and outputs from that UB uh, Behringer that's connecting to the uh, 
uh, outputs and, and inputs of my desktop across the room here, which would be right here. So anyway, no matter whether you're on Linux, you can actually do this on Mac as well. Mac has uh, Jack Audio. It's called Jack Pilot in, in one instance. It also has Melda plugins, this MBAM pass you can use for a Mac. So if you have a Mac, you can do the same thing. The idea is you have to take the side tone from the microphone input or the line input, go through this filter first, then to your sound card. In this case, it would be the speaker on Windows 10. So if this was, if again, in other words, this is the line input right here where the Ultra Pico keyer is coming into it. It's going into this VST host where I have this plug-in M bandpass. And then in the options you have audio settings, plug-in list. So if we take a look at that, you can see all the plugins. Then you scan right here. That's where you tell Pebbleboard where to find that plugin after you've downloaded it. It has a couple of its own plugins called Level, which I like. It also has a VU meter. So these are the uh, plugins unique just to Pebbleboard. But that allowed me to turn that down without blowing out your ears when we had the uh, bypass on. Okay, so we'll try it one more time to review this. For Fred on Windows 10, the Ultra Pico Keyer side tone is coming in to the line in check on this case. It's going into pedal board right here. And pedal board, and when you open it up, is using a plug-in, so it goes from the input to the output through a M band pass, this same plug-in we've been used to using. Then, on Fred, it goes to the, his Source Connect input right here. And then what we, what we also do is draw lines to the speaker. So that Fred could hear his own side tone. So that's the concept. It comes in, goes to a filter, goes to the speakers so you can hear it, monitor the side tone, and low latency. You won't notice, barely notice any delay, if any at all. It's very low latency which is another unique thing about Jack Audio when you set it up right. And then again that same keyer after it's being filtered goes to the Source Connect sound card which is the input sound card for Source Connect that you made with Synchronous Audio Router. Let's go ahead and show that for a second to show you that it is a legitimate Windows sound card here. Every Synchronous Audio there it is right there Every synchronous audio endpoint that you make will show up in Windows. Once synchronous audio router gets activated by the ASIO driver, in this case it's ASIO for all, once that gets activated, that's the ASIO driver that synchronous audio router is using. So there's the Source Connect sound card shows up. You can have as many sound cards as you want, name them whatever, and these are it's basically creating your own virtual audio cables and naming, the, naming them whatever you want and you don't have to worry about any particular settings and it's very low latency especially compared to normal virtual audio cables which could have 50 to 100 milliseconds or more uh, built into it just so they can process all the, the input but Synchronous Audio Router on his website lists that this is almost near zero latency when, when you do it his way that's another reason I really like Synchronous Audio Router and being able to name and make your own sound cards. Katia from KX Studio is the only Jack Audio connection bay that I've found on Windows to actually show up the names. Otherwise they're just a bunch of numbers and you have to figure out what's what. So that's why I found this to be very useful. Alright, that's Windows 10 side again. Now we we'll got another short review for Linux. We're coming in the microphone because I don't have any light input on my uh, laptop. It's going through the CAF filter. If I can find it here. Right there. That's how we set it up just like the other video. Then it goes to the jack source 
which is the input for Source Connect now, so I can transmit it over a browser to anybody else that's logged in to Source Connect now. So it can be more than just uh, uh, one other friend. You can have several people joining you in this QSO. And then from the filter, I also go to System, which is my sound card, so I can uh, hear it in low latency, near zero latency. Now these plugins here are, again, just for my microphone. We have a gate compressor, equalizer, and a de-esser, and a, another USB mic. And we're using ALSA in, ALSA out commands for those extra sound cards on Linux. In case you're interested, there's the USB mic right here. This is the command that I used. Okay, I took a little extra time trying to go through the review a few times, just try to clear up the confusion that it must be causing because it's a, a bit of a complicated looking uh, setup. Once you do it a few times, it becomes a little bit easier. And mine is a little more complicated since I'm trying to set up two different units and then isolate them so you can hear it. So for connecting one Ultra Pico keyer to another operator that's using an Ultra Pico keyer, you can both set it up no matter what operating you're uh, using, operating system you're using, and talk to each other using that uh, good side tone that get you get from either the filter from Windows using M bandpass or the filter from Linux using the CAF filter. Thanks for watching.